Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Yakuza 5 Extra Hard Difficulty Video Walkthrough, or EX Hard, depending on the uh, what it actually is, I'm not too sure. This is part 3, it is chapter 1, Backstage Dreams, we are Haruka, and yes, they probably going to get sued by Powerpuff Girls for that little face, but <laughs> I'm sure they don't care. This is the most bizarre part of Yakuza 5's campaign. We're going to be essentially doing music rhythm games and trying to become a Japanese idol. Idol? Idol, sorry. I don't know what an idol is, but it sounds interesting and I'd rather play that. But it's a lot of this. It's a lot of the same songs, the same like rhythms. The, the rhythm game itself is not particularly challenging, but the detection is up and down at times. I think most of it is player error, but I don't know. I find this to be absolutely baffling. I think it's great for the girls, if this is what Japanese girls want to do. I think it's great for people if they like the whole Jav culture, but I don't, and I don't know much about it. And if this is an indication of what it is, then I don't really know any more, having invested quite a lot of time in it. What I can tell you is, it is a nice diversion, it is a nice distraction, and if you're a little bit fatigued in Yakuza, it might be the thing that brings you back, it might be the thing that, you know, really stands out for you as a, a great sequence, but I come to this game for combat, and everything else is kind of just a bonus. This is uh, something else. <laughs> I, I don't even know what I would call it. Like, I think the animations are great on Haruka. I like Haruka's character. You know, she's uh, turning into a, a mature, pretty young woman. She's doing her thing, and this is actually going to be one of the frameworks for the rest of the story, believe it or not. Doesn't seem like it's going to have any real significance, but it, it actually does. Uh, which is cool, because uh, one of the greatest things I think that Yakuza does is how it brings everything together. A lot of games will have, you know, they'll have those false tragedies, they'll have those up and down moments, they'll have the, you know, the dark middle tier and then the final third will be the, the penultimate victory. Whereas in Yakuza it's, it's kind of always that notion of betrayal, 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 and then, you know, inevitable ultimate betrayal. So to have something that is a little bit more set into something stranger, a la uh, an idol concert, which everything kind of anchors on towards the final part of the game, it's interesting to have the uh, the, the wellspring of backstory to, to, to feel more about it. Because one of the areas where game stories fail is in character development and in character investment. And a lot of that is inherently personal. You either get into a game and it's characters or you don't. But a lot of the time it's down to the writers and it's down to the people who made the game to make you care. And if you've played all the games up to this point, you're invested in, in, in Haruka in a strange way, even if you don't really like her. Because you've protected her in almost every game. And now she's kind of going out in the world and doing her own thing. And the trouble that follows Kazuma is now following her. And... You get to see the build-up to that, and depending on what you care, you know, your own feelings on that build-up will depend on what that ultimate payoff will be. To me, I was just looking for people to take their shirts off and fight on top of Millennium Tower, because, you know, that's what I'm here to do. And I was not disappointed. I just... This sequence... Like, so far, we're, what, four minutes in? And I, I just don't know what to say. What do you say? You know? You can do side missions here to, to build up a special meter bar. You can upgrade Haruka to give her better dance powers, but even with none of the upgrades and none of the side missions, you can still do all of this as long as you've got semi-competent rhythm. And even then, you don't have to have that great rhythm because look at what they want you to do. They want you to score a B rank. They want you to get 10 max combo and 40 great ratings. And you smash it rather easily. And that's before the song is even done. So challenge-wise, Nothing here is going to stump you, because there's nothing here that stumpable. Unless you struggle with rhythm or coordination or something, which can be quite difficult if you're, for instance, like me, the PlayStation controller isn't really your main port of call, so the buttons, while you do have a lot of muscle memory there, thanks to the old PlayStation 1 days and PS2 days, it's not as natural as the A, B, X and Y is, because I use that a lot more. So there'll be moments where there's a lot of them in quick succession, and like the X will throw me off. But even then, 
Don't fail. I've never failed a song. And I do think that some features of the minigames are affected by difficulty, but not all of them. For instance, the song right now, I think this is just as fast as it was on hard, and I think it's just as complex as it was on hard, which is to say it's, it's not that complex. The good news is, though, it's not like the karaoke. If you play karaoke in these games, you'll notice that there are those times where the note is just as the, uh, the timer comes onto the bar, and it's almost impossible unless you're in tune with the song to know when to press that button because it's it's a very fast reaction and I'm an old man so <laughs> I don't have those young boy reactions. This this mini game doesn't do that, which I'm really grateful for because I think it's a bit cheap. Uh, I like a good example if you've ever played Guitar Hero with hyperspeed on. Did you ever play it in two player where it cuts off the fret so you have half the fret to react? That makes hyperspeed twice as fast. So if you play on hyperspeed 5, at that point you're on hyperspeed 10. And you need Korean reflexes to do that shit. Because that is, it's really, really tricky unless you're used to it. If you're used to it, you probably don't see it. But that's coming from somebody that plays on hyperspeed 5 comfortably. And when I do that multiplayer in Guitar Hero 3, it's almost impossible to see the notes. It's really, really fast. But we're moving out of Haruka's house and we're going to be challenged. And this is the, the more interesting of the dance fights. This is a, a dance battle where both you and your opponent are going to essentially do the same pattern. And whoever does it better is going to gain points and push the bomb to the other opponent's side. Once the timer is done and the bomb is on whoever's side, it'll blow up and deal damage. And I think this has the potential to be really good. My, my only criticism is it's way too easy. Like, I was hoping this was going to get DDR crazy where you're going to be going left, left, up, down, down, right, up, up, and, and all that kind of stuff, and it never really does, even on the, the most difficult dance battles. It gets a little trickier, but it's nowhere near as bad as that restaurant minigame where you have to stop them all at a different timing, and it, it gets really fast towards the end. And I suppose it's a weird middle ground, isn't it? There's the risk of making it too hard and putting off your, your casual players, and then there's the risk of making it too easy and boring your more experienced players. So I don't know personally what balance they've managed to achieve because outside of this walkthrough I don't really do Haruka's story all that much. And if you could skip it I would. And, and I do think that's sad because I think it's, it is a, a fun part of the game w for one time. But I'd rather do Akiyama this entire sequence because I think Akiyama's bits are really good. But there is going to be a lot of going to Diner Chair, which if you look at it, it kind of looks like it says Dyke, which I thought was kind of weird. Yeah, you know if you pronounce that interestingly, looks a bit funny, doesn't it? But all we're going to be doing is missions via this talent agency until the the plot starts to progress. And the good news is the plot does, you know, it gets busy quite quickly, but there's still going to be a lot of this superfluous dancing bullshit which you're either going to love or it's going to frustrate you. For me personally, on my first playthrough, it kind of made me not want to play the game anymore. Uh, it was so, like, overpowering for me because I don't play Yakuza for this. You know, I've, When I first looked at this, I'm like, are they really going to make me do this? Like, this is the handshake mini game, which is kind of interesting. All you have to do is match the colour of their response to your reply. It took me ages to figure this out, so you're going to see me fuck this up pretty bad. And on on Extra Hard, or maybe it's just on this particular minigame at this point, it's quite quick. So by the time you've read it, and you don't have time to read all the replies sometimes before the you have to say something. Because if you don't reply quick enough, the person gets annoyed at you. And if you don't realise you're just matching colours at this point, it's like, you've got to read it really quickly. And by the time you've... Like, look, he's, he's almost told him to leave. It's it's kind of tricky, but I do like this minigame, especially once you understand it, because you can boss it really well. I just don't really get this culture. It's like, do they not have celebrity worship in Japan? Is it just idols instead? Are they idols, the, the celebrities in that culture? I assume they have film stars, because it's universal, isn't it? I don't know. I'm trying to think what we would compare it to in, in, in like, a Western culture. Is it... Like being just a model? Is it like being somebody who wins X Factor or something? I don't know. Because I don't think it's the equivalent of being like a titty model in a paper. I think it's a little bit more... I'm not going to say classic because there's not wrong with being a titty model in a paper if that's what you want to do when you're, you're gifted with large breasts. I just... 
it's just a really hard contrast, I think. See, if you look at it, it looks like a book signing, doesn't it? But it's really not a book signing. You know, Haruka hasn't written a book yet. <laughs> But the Princess League is the tournament that we're going to be building towards, and it is, a th I think it's three rounds, where you have to dance against an opponent known as T-Set, which is the other girls that are vying to be the top idol. And the dancers are, for the most, really easy. Ignore the score chart, because the score chart makes it look like you're losing, but as long as you do a competent performance, by the end you'll win, every time, regardless of, of what you do. If you have the ability to transform uh, Haruka's dress, you get a massive influx of points and a really good lead, and that can help you win if you're not too good at the button presses. But this is the, the song you're going to see a lot that we're practicing right now. In fact, I think this is the, the T set battle, it is. So you'll notice on the bottom right there is the Powerpuff Girl picture, and right now we're winning because uh, we, we have the gold around our face and they're all like sweaty and anime. So keep your chain going. And just watch as the camera focuses on you, which means you're winning. But you'll notice they just took the momentum. Yet, on the bar, we're still look like we're winning. Because we've got the, the larger uh, majority of the, the bar. And I think it's just... Either if you miss a note, or when the camera focuses on other people, it, it gives you kind of like a superficial boost. But if, if you look at the bar, we're comfortable right now. We're doing fine. And we managed to pull it back just then, even though we've, you know, we've got like three, three fourths of that bar. It's just lying to us. Let's see if we've got a combo going at the moment, because it's pretty simple stuff. But there are times when you'll do it and the, the input just drops, or you miss it and it feels like you should have hit it. And I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is. It's just one of those things. All rhythm games have it. It could be 100% human error, but at times it feels like it's not. Uh, you'll notice I use some idle heat. My best advice for idle heat is to save it until there's an area with a lot of notes. Like this would probably be a decent area because quite a lot of notes in rapid succession. But like look at that, we got all those notes and it looks like those other people uh, have got the upper hand. But I think it might be them just using idle heat. Because you'll notice they no longer have the love heart. But right now is uh, Haruka solo and you're able to... Not only get some upskirt action, if that's your thing, but you can change your outfit, which is going to give you a massive boost. Which I, I don't know how she does this. She's been she's been playing way too much Final Fantasy X-2, but there you go. And there was a, two mistakes right there. But did you see the bar? Didn't affect the bar too much. Didn't really affect anything. And this is the hardest difficulty, which is one of the laziest, hardest difficulties of a game I've ever played. You know, they give the bosses a little bit more life, they make them a little bit more aggressive, maybe do a little more damage, and then it's just they remove the checkpoints because that makes a tough game, right, guys? But we're coming up on the end of the song now. This is the first opportunity to know the lyrics as well, unless you speak Japanese. And good luck reading the lyrics, because how the fuck can you do a rhythm game and read at the same time is is some, like, double dual-play Ikaruga-type bullshit. I can't do that. Also, get used to hearing this song. I've, I've showed you all the instances where it has to be played, but there are so many opportunities where you can play it without it needing to be done. And you're going to get sick of it pretty quick, unless you really like it, which I hope you do, because there's a lot of it. <laughs> That's what this sequence is. It's a lot of very interesting Japanese cultured stuff. But now that we're back in control, back out on the streets of... Is it Satanbori, this place, I think it is? Uh, Sotenbori, sorry. We're going to be moving towards the waypoint. Pretty standard stuff. There's, I, I really, there's not really much to say, you know, about this whole Hariku stuff. So I'm probably going to start talking about some other stuff. Like I recently watched the Hateful Eight, which is the new Quentin Tarantino movie that everybody's been raving about, and uh, it was a good film. Um, I enjoyed it. I don't think I'll ever watch it again because I think the the main premise of that movie is the twist. And it is the discovery of the twist. So now that I know it, watching it again, not going to have the same effect. And uh, it is probably one of the slowest Quentin Tarantino films he's ever made. Like straight up, slow burning, character development, oh. you know, atmospheric, like three hour long movie. But that doesn't mean it's bad, you know. It's still really, really solid. And I really like Kurt Russell. You know, I've always been a big Kurt Russell fan. I think he's the best thing about that film. 
And I didn't realise that Samuel Jackson was going to turn out to essentially be the Suedo main character. I thought it was Kurt Russell, which disappointed me a lot. And don't get me wrong, I like me some Samuel Jackson. I just think that Kurt Russell is more interesting to watch in a lot of those roles. He just There's something about the Kurt. I'm a, I'm a big fan. But I went on a bit of a movie binge watching Spectre, which I thought was a, a, a perfectly fine film. It just tried so hard not to be Skyfall that I think it went a bit goofy. And then I watched The Martian, which I thought was a great film with Matt Damon just really knocking it out of the park considering that he is predominantly the driving force of that film because he's, you know, he's on his own on Mars and every so often we're cutting back but for the most it's pretty much his journey. And it, I think they managed to do a really, really good job of giving it enough peril for it to maintain interest but at the same time not be too ridiculous. Even though it is kind of like a sequence of really unfortunate events, but that's pretty much how any disaster and any accident really happens. Uh, so I can I can let him off for that. But Jeff Daniels was great in it. Uh, that guy um, who who was in was it Twelve Years a Slave was great in it. I can never pronounce the dude's name or remember it, but he was really really good. If it was him, the bad guy in Serenity, I think you'll recognise that probably better. But just solid cast, a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, surprisingly a large amount of humour for something that can be at times quite morose, just the idea of dying alone a million of miles away from, from home, but really really well put together and, and just an interesting film. I'm a big science fiction guy even though that was more like science drama, but I suppose there was some fiction in it because there was colonising Mars and all kinds of crazy stuff. But right now you're looking for a guy called Christian, he's going to replace our dance instructor because they're going to a little argument with our boss and uh, we're going to be notified once we come to this place, which is it like the Stigil or something, Stige or something? I remember this from Yakuza 2, but you're going to be trying to find uh, this dude, and she's going to ambush us, and she's going to challenge us to a fight, and the dude in the bar mentioned that he left, and she's going to tell us where he is, because he's near the river, and once we beat her, Christian's going to pretty much agree to be our trainer, because he realises that Haruka's super genuine, and that she... She, she dances with everything she's got, it's never mechanical, it's always from the heart kind of Disney bullshit. And uh, this girl is 100% mechanical on the right, she's uh, dead in the eyes, basically. And he won't train her, so she gets kind of upset and insert drama bullshit. The good news is uh, we're really going through this quite quickly, even though this is a very long chapter. So once we get this guy, it's going to pretty much trigger one of the shifts in the story, and there's going to be a murder, so look forward to that. And if you're anything like me, you were literally climbing the walls waiting for a fight, because this is the, the longest we've gone so far without any fights, outside of the hunting. And the hunting was at least interesting for me, because it involved shooting guns. And um, I prefer shooting guns to dancing, to jav songs. Or is it J-A-V? I don't even know what that is. That, in that Japanese adult video, that's probably something different. Shows how much my uh, idol thing and Japanese stuff is is knowledgeable. I, I probably know more about the, the Jav side than I do anything else. As uh, sordid as that is. But it says head to Soten TV. This is a place you're going to be visiting a few times. There is a whole wealth of minigames that you can partake in here to do Haruka's side stories and her side missions. There's a ton of them and they're all kind of throwaway trash, but they can be fun and they can be interesting. The one that really stands out as rage-inducingly bad is the comedian one, which thankfully you only have to do one round, but that one round might be the hardest side mission in this game because you have to do comedic typing on a language you don't know. And is there anything more difficult than quipping in Japanese when you don't speak it? I don't think so. And it took me at least 10 attempts. It's horrendously bad. And it's bad for one reason, other than the whole language barrier. It should have been get like higher than 50 or get higher than 60. Do an average performance that two strangers could have done at this kind of comedy show. But that's not what this game demands of you. This game wants you to get like above 80 or some bullshit. Like, get a really high score on something you shouldn't be forced to get a high score on. And it means not only picking the right option, which is not easy because you don't speak fucking Japanese, but timing it right as well. So there's a lot of gags that just don't line up. 
with responses that don't make a lot of sense. And then when you find the correct one, you've got to find the correct timing, which sometimes, and almost always, is immediately after he's finished talking. But you don't know when he's finished talking because sometimes he leaves gaps and then he talks again. So if you jump in, you lose points and it, it's horrible. You have to literally do it like a rhythm game. You have to get into the cadence of how he speaks and then re recognize the bits where he stops and be quick and pick the right one. And it, it like it was it was rough, really rough, but I managed to do it and I, I was really mad that day. And the worst part is Every single time I play now, I get these text messages on the phones telling me that I've done all the sub-stories for every character but Haruka. Then I did Haruka's, hoping I would be able to fight Amon, and I could add a, an ex extra hard Amon fight into this walkthrough, and it doesn't count. I have to do everyone else's again, which I think is just dumb as shit. And it's, it's one of the things I really hate about Yakuza. They're so set in their ways for doing pedantic, large side quests to unlock something that I would really like to do. Like, I don't want to do every submission because most of them are shit. I want to fight the hardest boss in the game, but I don't want to see your entire game to do it. And I appreciate the logic to it, and I think it is, you know, it's good for the fans and it's good for the people that like doing it, but I want to fight. I don't want to date. I don't want to fucking pick shit up. I don't want to go and, you know, do miscellaneous tasks. I want to fight, and, and I can't. And it's the same on every one of them, and it'll be the same because it's almost like the Wedge and Biggs of Final Fantasy. It's it's what Yakuza does. You accept it or you get over it. And it's the similar thing with the Ultimate Battle stuff. I absolutely hate the, the challenges in these games because there's 50 shit ones to unlock the good ones. And I don't know why they, they've decided to do it this way. And it's always bullshit, like, do it with a tiny life bar and no moves. Do it where all you can do is throw people. Do it where all you can do is use weapons or... And it's always some kind of really awkward, shitty stuff that doesn't gel well with the game. And then when you do all of them, if you can, because some of them are incredibly frustrating with time limits and all kinds of restrictions, you get to the good ones, which is boss rushes, boss challenges, you know, all the cool fights in a row. That's the cool stuff. That should be unlocked from the start. That's the ones people want to play. People don't want to do fucking dodge everybody for two minutes. That's boring. Like... It's so stupid. Like, there's one on this game where you have to beat a bunch of people using nothing but that bullshitty dragon mode with Kazuma. And I I, I just, I tried it once, I didn't do it. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I'm never going to do this, and I, and I probably never will. And it's really sad, because I would love to fight all the bosses in a row at my leisure, but if I have to go through 20 things I'd rather pull teeth out than do, then it's something I'm not going to be able to do. And... I think it's really disappointing. There should be an unlock code that just unlocks everything from the start and you should be able to go straight to it. You know, I, I have no time to just do bullshit. Like, I can understand the golden gun and, and those items, like the war god talisman. These are items that break the game, so they have to be hard to get, and that makes sense. But the stuff that's a challenge and the stuff that'd be really cool to do, don't hide that behind a barrier of bullshit.